Hello and welcome back to another video. This is another MFDS exam preparation video, but a special edition, oral surgery edition. So we're gonna be looking at all questions associated with oral surgery. I'm not gonna to touch too much on uh, questions associated with certain instruments that need to be used for certain procedures and, and those kinds of things. I would assume that they're pretty well known at this stage. It's gonna be more focused on the other side of oral surgery. So let's jump in and look at our first question. An incisional biopsy is indicated in which one of the following lesions? A squamous cell carcinoma, a fibroepithelial polyp of the lip, a buccal hemangioma, a palpable submandibular gland lump, or an amalgam tattoo? Well, the first thing to consider here is what is the difference between an incisional and an excisional biopsy? An excisional biopsy is where we remove everything, all of the lesion. An incisional biopsy is where we remove one piece of the lesion. So if we run through some of the options here, an amalgam tattoo doesn't need any treatment. The submand submandibular gland lump won't be a biopsy, it'll be a, it'll be a needle aspiration. Buccal hemangioma shouldn't be biopsied, so we're looking at is it either a fibroepithelial polyp or a squamous cell carcinoma? Well, a squamous cell carcinoma should never be an excisional biopsy because we need to see where it is. So the correct answer here is A. Now, right, question two, which one of the following is not a common sign of a fractured zygoma? Subconjunctival hemorrhage with no visible boundary, diplopia, paresthesia of the infraorbital nerve, epistaxis or anosmia. Okay, so a lot of big words in this question. Uh, fractured zygoma is a fractured cheekbone. Subconjunctival hemorrhage is kind of bloodshot, bleeding eye. Uh, diplopia is double vision. Those would be very common. Both of those would be very commonly associated with a fractured zygoma. Paresthesia of the infraorbital nerve. The infraorbital nerve exits through the infraorbital foramen, which is on the zygoma. So that's high, highly likely to be uh, a, a sign of a fractured zygoma. Epistaxis is a uh, fancy word for, for nosebleeds. Um, and again, common, that's kind of coming from the maxillary sinus, which is essentially part of the zygoma. Anosmia is a loss of smell, not really associated with a fractured zygoma. So the correct answer here is gonna be E. Okay, so question three. Xerostomia does not occur after radiotherapy, occur in patients with Sjogren syndrome, occur during a panic attack, cause an increase in root caries, occur while taking pedocarpine. Okay, so this is a bit more of a straightforward question. Definitely will occur after radiotherapy. Sjogren syndrome is dry mouth and dry eyes. It can happen during a panic attack as well. Due to the lack of saliva, it does cause an increase in root caries. Um, and pedocarpine is actually the treatment that is used for dry mouth. So the correct answer here is E, pedocarpine. Question four, after an extraction, which one of the following conditions would sterilization of the instrument be achieved? Now I put this one in intentionally because this actually came up on my exam and I didn't have a clue. So the options are A, 112 degrees for 15 minutes, or B, the same for five minutes. C, 121 for 15 minutes, D, the same for 5 minutes, or E, 134 degrees for 1 minute. Now, as I said, this did come up, it actually came up on my MFDS Part 2 exam, and this is not something that I had studied or learned at all, but definitely it does come up on the exam. Do learn off these numbers, and it's, it's easy, easy points then. Um, the ones here to learn off are for sterilization to occur, it has to be at 134 degrees for three minutes or at 121 degrees for 15 minutes. So the correct answer here would be C. Now, so question five, the muscle of mastication that helps retract the mandible is A, the temporalis, B, the masseter, C, the lateral pterygoid, D, the medial pterygoid, or E, the buccinator muscle? Um, this is kind of a straight knowledge question. You either know this or you don't, but you know, you can feel the, the muscles while you're there in the exam. Uh, the correct answer here is the temporalis. It's kind of those inferior uh, fibers that are able to pull the, the mandible back as well. 
So that is all that we have time for in this video. I would ask that if you find this useful, uh, please like and maybe subscribe to my channel. I was also going to ask that if you have any questions that you'd like me to answer, stick them down in the comments as well. And I'll see you in the next video.